Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. In this video I'm going to be doing a detailed walkthrough or breakdown of my live action Aurora costume. So this dress behind me um, and this is based on the wedding dress that Aurora wears at the end of Maleficent Mistress of Evil which is a Disney live action film that came out in 2019. So first things first I just want to mention that I will be using my um, live action Aurora progress journal as a guide um, to guide me through the different components of the costume since there are so many um, but that's not to say that this video is a replacement for that book. Um, that book which is available on my website goes through the making of the costume so you can see the work in progress pictures um, and construction notes things like that so that's what I'll be using as a guide so if you see me looking down all the time uh, that's why and also I just want to mention that there is a full playlist already up on my YouTube channel about the entire making of process um, for this costume so there's about 33 vlogs I just uploaded the last one yesterday um, so if you want to follow along the journey of making the entire costume from start to finish um, you can head over to that playlist which I'll link uh, in the cards above and the description box below so without further ado, let's get started. Um, as an introduction to this costume, I'll give you an idea of timeframes. The entire duration of the project would have been from April 2020 to June 2021. So quite a long time, um, but I did take a lot of breaks in between. Um, and I also had some other projects here and there that I was working on as well. Um, but that was the main project that I was working on at that time. So there were three different versions or iterations of this dress while I was completing it. So the base dress was completed in September of 2020. The base dress was pretty much um, the main fabric and nothing else. There was no overlay of netting, there was no flowers or vines or decorations on the dress, um, purely just the base garment itself. Um, that took me from April to September to complete. Version one, um, so version one of the dress is without flowers and vines. That was completed in February of 2021. So the difference between the base dress and version one is that version one has added lace. Um, so that was using a, a veil. Uh, version two, which is the final version that you can see behind me, um, and that's complete with vines and flowers. That was completed in June, 2021. So there are quite a few components to this costume. Um, so if I just run through the list of everything that I need to remember as part of wearing this costume, um, it would include a cotton singlet, which I wear underneath the corset, a short cotton skirt, which is just, um, just a nice skirt to wear underneath the petticoat and hoop skirt and all the rest of it. Um, obviously the corset, which laces up um, and helps to provide that structure um, for the bodice, the hoop skirt, uh, the petticoat, the actual skirt, so I call it the skirt skirt, so that's the one that has all the flowers on. Um, that then also has a train ruffle attached to it, so that's another component uh, in itself. Um, the bodice, um, tiara, shoes, I generally wear heels with this dress because it is quite long, so I do need that height. Um, and then also a wig. Um, and that is everything that's part of this costume. Um, so I guess what we'll do is just dive straight into the costume and we'll take a detailed look at it. So this here is the corset and this was made using an Ariana uh, black corset pattern um, available online and I believe this is the Dolores pattern if you want to follow it. Um, I did make some slight adjustments um, and that was basically for the, the bust area. Um, so I, I don't know if you can tell but um, I've just made that some sort of curved flat bust shape um, and I've used cable ties as boning so um, it's not ideal for this. Um, ideally you would have um, like spiral um, steel boning and then that way it can actually bend to the curves that you need it to um, but this, this tends to work fine for me and I'm not ever wearing a corset on the daily anyway so um, a day, a day or two here or there is, is fine for me. Um, so on the back of the corset, um, I've put in metal eyelets because I have learned my lesson from all of my other corsets that I've made. Um, if I just hand stitch them, the fabric tends to rip. So I 
put in the metal eyelets and then I also hand bound around all of the eyelets to make sure that they're really strong and secure. And I really like this floor set and I'm glad that I made it because uh, now I can actually wear this with other costumes in future. Um, so any other princess outfits that have a slim fitting bodice, um, I can definitely wear this corset underneath. So this corset is made from um, cotton calico material. Um, so it's just two layers of calico and then there's a waist stay uh, in the center um, along the waistline. And that's just with a um, grow grain cotton ribbon, um, I would say. And then there's just simple bias binding around the top and bottom edges. And that's it really for the corset. Um, I don't have the lacing in this because the lacing's in my Wonder Woman outfit at the moment. Um, but when I do wear this costume, I do the bunny lacing method. Um, and that way I can just pull at my sides and that tightens the corset. Um, and I can do that quite easily by myself without any assistance. On top of the corset, a hoop skirt is worn. This hoop skirt was bought from AliExpress and it was originally a big traditional hoop skirt that goes all the way around. Um, but what I did was I altered it and I cut out the, the steel from the front of the hoop skirt and then made it so that it's more of a bustled trained hoop skirt. So a lot of the volume actually goes towards the back and the purpose of this is to really help with the shape um, of the back of the skirt because the train of the skirt is really heavy and needs something to support that. So that's the purpose of the hoop skirt. Um, the way that I altered it was literally cut out the front, um, cut right through the steel um, and I put in a cotton tape um, which sits behind my knees, just behind my knees to make sure that the rest of the hoop skirt contraption stays behind me as opposed to um, getting tangled in between my legs. Um, the top of the hoop skirt is just a basic elastic with a drawstring to tie it um, and basically this, this cheap hoop skirt, it was super inexpensive, about $15, $15-$20 and I don't mind if it gets all scratched up um, by the ground so it is a little bit worse for wear but I'd rather that that gets scratched up than the actual costume that I worked so hard on. Over the hoop skirt I wear a petticoat and this is the same petticoat that I use for basically all of my long dress costumes and this was actually made from a dress that I found at an op shop or at least my friend found it at an op shop and I altered it and what I did was I altered it so that it's a drawstring waist and I can easily adjust it um, for any waist size. Um, there is additional lace that I've added at the bottom and that was simply because I was wearing it under a costume where the bottom of the petticoat was going to sneak through um, and I just wanted some pretty lace there but really that's just for decoration and it serves no purpose. So the purpose of the petticoat is to really just smooth out the shape of the hoop skirt and make sure that um, everything lays nice and smooth over the top um, with the final skirt that goes on top of everything. The main base skirt is made from a crepe back satin fabric, which is the light pink fabric. And I bought this from a fabric store in Perth in Western Australia, and it was really inexpensive. It was on sale for about $6 per meter. And I ended up buying, or well, probably close to nine meters of this. And the fabric width, I didn't actually realize, but it's actually quite narrow, so it meant that I had to do a lot of piecing together um, to create the really wide skirt panel shapes. So there was a lot of triangles involved in the cutting out of the pieces and quite a bit of sewing together long panels, long skirt panels. So each of the skirt panels is flat lined with cotton broadcloth, um, and that really helps to um, give that skirt the the structure that it needs um, and the weight that it needs because the crepe back satin fabric is really lightweight. It's actually transparent and see-through um, and it just wasn't going to work in terms of being able to hold up all of the weight of the flowers and everything else that's going on on the dress because it is quite a significant piece of work. So um, yeah, all of the pieces were lined, uh, flat lined with cotton broadcloth um, and I believe I went through Ooh, 
it would have definitely been over 10 meters of cotton broadcloth into this costume so quite a lot um, there is also a lot that went into the train ruffle as well but we'll get into that a bit later i initially created a um, your traditional waistband um, which is like a long rectangle and i wanted that to close with um, a hook and bar in the in the back uh, like a traditional skirt would um, but i found that that was way too thick and I really wanted to minimize the bulk at the waist as much as possible so instead what I did was I opted for split the skirt into two and have the back tie on separately to the front so the back of the skirt um, is held up by cotton grain tape and a skirt hook and bar um, and that's really holding all of the weight um, from the back and then the front portion of the skirt is tied with um, just basic ribbon satin ribbon um, and the way that I minimized the bulk at the top was just applying a lightweight bias binding and that would um, get rid of the raw edges for me as for the raw edges down the sides of the um, skirt the insides of the skirt um, um, so what I ended up doing was just folding the inside seams um, under in on themselves and then just ironing those down so it seems to have worked um, and it's kept the raw edges minimal which is really good and that's exactly what I wanted another feature on the base skirt that I really love is the addition of pockets so what I've done is added pockets um, very very deep pockets and they're held up with a cotton tape um, at the point the lowest point of the pocket to make sure that it doesn't droop down and it doesn't bring the weight uh, down with it with whatever I put in the pockets so I can actually put things quite heavy in those pockets and that's really great um, one more thing to mention about the base skirt is how I finished off the hem so the hem is finished with um, facing um, just with cotton broadcloth used as facing and before I put the facing in I actually um, put in a horsehair crinoline braid and that's really to help with the structure of the skirt and keep that skirt laying in a nice shape uh, away from my feet so I can actually walk otherwise if there was none of that support from the horsehair crinoline braid um, that would mean that the the skirt would just get all tangled at my feet and you wouldn't really be able to walk in it. Now the train ruffle is a beast in itself and this is really where the true weight of the skirt comes in. It's where that all of the fabric that's ruffled up into that train ruffle um, and then that's attached to the skirt that that really is the bulk of this costume so the train ruffle it's made from cotton and polypoplin fabric as well so a mix of any broadcloth that I had left over as well as um, cheap $2 polypoplin fabric from Spotlight and the reason why I, I didn't mind using such cheap fabric is because the, the purpose of the train ruffle is to um, have that contact to the ground and you know it's, all, it's going to get scratched up and all dirty and everything and then I just chuck it into the wash and wash just that train ruffle and then I can reattach it to the dress um, for, for wearing at a future stage. So I didn't mind using um, various cottons and poly blends uh, just as long as I had something um, that wasn't my main fabric of the nice netting and the nice satin uh, crate back satin fabric. I didn't want any of that touching the ground and getting dirty because cotton is a lot easier to clean than any other fabrics. So the train ruffle, um, this is actually a Victorian technique used in Victorian ball gowns. So essentially the train ruffle is to make sure that the dress doesn't get dirty when it touches the ground. And I had taken some liberties with how I attached it to the, the base of the dress. Um, I ended up using plastic snaps or those popper snaps um, because I found those were the strongest and they were going to actually provide um, the the hold that I needed because of how much fabric was in the train ruffle itself. So I think I had about definitely over 30 meters lengthwise of cotton and polypoplin fabric in that train ruffle alone. So the plastic snap poppers is what I used, um, but I do know that from my research that in, in Victorian times they would have used things like buttons or little ribbon ties or cotton ties so there are all sorts of different ways that you can go about it um, but the snap poppers 
is what I had on hand and also what I found to be uh, the most suitable. Just one more thing on the train portion of the skirt is that the horsehair braid um, that actually really helps to hold out the train of the skirt as well um, that's also something that I learned from my research into historical techniques is that they use the horsehair braid along the train of the skirt to really help with the shape otherwise the fabric when you walk it would just keep uh, folding in on itself and that's not very uh, that that's not what you really want so uh, that's the other purpose of the horsehair crinoline braid so once the base skirt was made up i then proceeded to add the netting layer over the top so the netting is all bought from aliexpress it was just one whole heap of 10 yards of netting um, that i bought really cheaply off aliexpress um, it's not tulle i know that tulle or some sort of silk organza would have been used for the actual screen accurate version um, but I just ended up using netting because it was cheap and it gives me the same look and feel um, and basically how I did this was literally grab my 10 yards of netting and just drape it over my dress form over the skirt and just snipped away at the parts that I knew that I needed and the parts that I could use for things like the sleeve or the bodice um, and then from there I just gathered it all down to the waist and hand sewed it down so hand stitched all along the top of the skirt along the waistline um, and did my best to get rid of the raw edges as best as I could um, and I just sewed that all down with very tiny back stitches to make sure it's all nice and secure and then along the bottom of the skirt um, so this is once the hem has already been uh, faced with the cotton broadcloth and it's all finished um, what I did was I pinned all along the hem of the skirt um, and I like folded over the netting layer and then hand sewed that down using catch stitches um, or the crisscross stitch as I call it all along the bottom of the hem so that is how the netting has been attached to the skirt um, and then on top of that I also added some lace so I bought a veil off Aliexpress and I then draped that over the top and that veil has this really nice white lace um, pattern along the along the hem of it and that's the part that I wanted to match up to the hem of the train of the skirt um, so I applied that so Essentially the skirt has almost two layers of netting, or at least the back portion of the skirt does. The front portion um, is is just one layer and it's it's sort of uh, the, the, the leftovers and the remnants of the, the netting that I had. Um, whereas the back portion is pretty much completely covered because of that veil um, and that's all hand sewn down the same way that I sewed the, uh, the netting layer down onto the skirt. The vines and leaves I got commissioned by my friend Heloys on Instagram, so I'll leave his account in the description box below, um, but definitely check out his work. He's been really, really helpful in... Uh, I actually met him through when I was making my Jasmine costume uh, because he was making the same one, um, but yes, uh, definitely check out his work um, and he does a lot of live action Disney costumes and makes up patterns for them so he kindly uh, embroidered all of the leaves and vines for me because I wasn't sure how to do that um, the way that he did it was uh, what's called freehand embroidery and it is actually quite dangerous because if you if you sort of slip and your your fingers go under the needle then ouch <laughs> um, and basically this was done on organza and tulle fabric and he used a, a water, sol water soluble stabilizer um, which then just dissolves in water and then you're just left with the embroidery so that was done with all types of different embroidery threads there's dark green mid green a bit of lighter green um, and there's even some metallic threads as well um, through some of those vines and leaves which is really pretty so once all of those were sewn down um, basically I just sewed those all by hand um, and I just sort of placed them 
on the skirt as I felt looked nice um, and I just I didn't sew them all the way down so the leaves are only tacked at you know maybe the top and the bottom of the leaf and the vines are only tacked down at the base of the skirt and then a few points up towards the top so um, yeah just hand sewing in strategic places just so I save a bit of time for myself because there is so much hand sewing involved. So once all of that was done I then proceeded to add the flowers and I worked in three different sections with the flowers. I started with the big large flowers then I progressed to the medium sized flowers and then finally there's all the little flowers that are scattered more towards the the middle portion of the skirt um, and then just um, taper off into nothing at the the top of the skirt. So all of the flowers they were bought from AliExpress. There's a whole bunch of different colors of flowers that I bought. I wanted it to be a mix of pink, purple, um, more orangey colors, sort of like a sunset. Um, and I was very much inspired by the concept art. Um, I didn't really want to go the route of making it very pale like the on-screen version um, they did keep their flowers quite pale because they digitally altered the dress to be blue and green and different colors in the end of the film um, but mine I really wanted to be quite vibrant um, in the colors that were used and I wanted to keep them to the, the, the same sort of color family so those pinks light pinks um, medium pinks purples um, and a bit of orange in there as well so I feel like the colors work really nicely with the flowers and I'm quite happy with how it turned out. So in order to get the flowers arranged, um, well firstly I had to pick apart all of the flowers because they came with plastic parts that I didn't want. I didn't want any of the plastic stems and some of them had very ugly looking leaves. So I got rid of those, unpicked all of the flowers and then hand stitched them back together. So some of them I left apart so I could have petals as opposed to full flowers um, and then some of them I just sewed back together but without the plastic parts that I didn't want. And then I arranged them onto the dress and like I said I worked bottom up starting with the big flowers then the medium and then the small flowers. Um, I pinned them all until I ran out of pins then I had to sew them together, uh, sew them to the dress and then I would reclaim some pins, pin some more, sew them to the dress and it was that repetitive process of, of doing that a lot of times. Um, there is also just some additional lace at various points at the bottom of the dress um, and these were just off cuts from a friend um, through a secret Santa, a sewing secret Santa. So my friend gave me uh, some off cuts of some lace and they match the dress quite perfectly actually. A few things to mention before I move on to the bodice is that the base skirt um, I've purposefully not cut uh, or not sewn um, the tool or netting sorry the netting at various points um, such as the pockets so where the pockets are I do want access to them still so I made sure that that was left open um, and also when when actually wearing this costume um, what I'll do is I'll safety pin the the very end of the train ruffle to the actual skirt and that that makes sure that they don't come apart when I wear it um, and that makes sure that the the main skirt doesn't get ruined by the dirt and the earth because the train ruffle is pinned exactly to where it needs to be covered. I hope that makes sense but if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Moving on to the bodice, so the bodice was made up using the truly Victorian 1860s ball gown bodice pattern but I had to highly modify it because I wanted the V shape um, to be a lot more pronounced and, and prominent in the front um, so quite a very tapered V um, and also the shoulder part of the bodice I needed to change up as well. Um, I don't know if that's just me and my body but I found that um, when I did my mock-up it just did not fit me or whatsoever so I basically changed the whole bodice pattern um, but if you are curious I did base it on that 1860s ball gown bodice um, I do have my Aurora bodice pattern uh, ready to go up on my website eventually um, but it's not yet up but I will 
leave it in the description box below if I do happen to upload it. Um, but yes, I do have I do have my own pattern of that, or at least the the pattern that I used, um, which I had to highly modify. Um, so basically, just cutting out the the pattern much too big and uh, working with that to achieve the shape that I wanted. So the bodice is made from the same crepe back satin fabric as the skirt and again lined with cotton except this is a, a thicker cotton than the cotton broadcloth that was used for the skirt. Um, this is actually li uh, flat lined with cotton drill um, so that helps with the structure of the bodice. Um, and then of course over the top um, I've got the netting layer draped over the top. So the bodice obviously closes in the front with a centre front closure and I've got um, a cable tie in the centre front to help with that support of the, the closure and make sure that it doesn't wrinkle or buckle um, weirdly. And all along that I have metal hooks and little thread bars and that's all down the front of the bodice and then I've just got three metal hooks and uh, thread bars uh, for the top overlay of the netting um, and that just helps to secure that in place and hide the hide the closure. Um, other things that I've got uh, sewn to the bodice to help with closures and such is uh, three skirt hooks and bars, um, one at the back of the bodice um, and then two at the side fronts of the bodice and that helps to attach the bodice to the skirt of the dress. So the, the skirt the top of the skirt actually has those um, skirt bars to attach the, the bodice hooks to. Hope that makes sense, but I'm sure you can see it um, in the visuals on screen. Uh, one more closure that I have on the bodice is actually what I call the waist stay. And this is basically a um, piece of cotton grow grain tape that secures around the waist. Um, and it just helps to bring that point at the back of the bodice down and keep that in place at the small of the back. Um, and that just closes in the front uh, with a skirt hook and bar. There is also cable ties in the center back of the bodice and also just two at the side fronts of the bodice as well to help with that, um, that structural support. Over the top of the bodice I've obviously got the netting overlay and the netting sleeves. So the netting sleeves, these were just hand sewn to the shoulders of the bodice. Um, the netting over the bodice itself, um, that was all just gathered down by eye um, and pinned down and then, and then sewn down by hand. And then also there's the netting uh, that forms the traditional, or well not traditional, but the iconic collar. Um, look that Aurora has. So I did want to incorporate that um, using the netting as well. So all along the inside of the bodice you can see that I've tried my best to finish off the raw edges um, as best as I can. Um, so all along the um, actual edges of the bodice I really wanted to minimize bulk so all I did was simply roll that edge over and then hand stitch it down um, and I believe I used the catch stitch um, but I think I just used various stitches to be honest anything to to keep keep those raw edges down and hidden away and then along each of the seams of the bodice um, what I did was used a little whip stitch to stitch down the um, the crepe back satin to cover the raw edges of the cotton drill. So last but not least on the bodice is of course the flowers. So I have uh, the flowers um, positioned at the shoulders of the bodice as well as uh, flowing down onto the sleeves and then there's just a bunch of flowers just at the uh, at the waist on the right hand side. Um, and that's it for the flowers on the bodice. Um, those were all hand sewn down um, and I used a mix of the medium sized flowers and then also the, the little tiny flower petals along the sleeves. At the back of the bodice um, there are a few larger flowers but not too many and I really wanted to create that V tapered shape and almost like um, she's growing flowers from her back almost as if you were to imagine like fairy wings or sprouting from her back except they're flowers so that's where I wanted that central point to be. 
Um, the bodice really nicely just um, drapes over the top of the back of the skirt. I was really worried about how this might turn out but I'm actually very pleased with how it turned out in the end. Um, but the netting layer just is cut off organically and then I've got um, some remaining vines and leaves just hanging off the back of the bodice to flow in with the rest of the skirt. As for accessories that I have for Aurora, I made two tiaras. The first tiara is, um, it's actually just a silver tiara that I bought from online and I sewed flowers all across the tiara so you can barely see the original tiara itself. And I also wrapped uh, like a pearl trim around the flowers just to add that little bit of extra detail. The other tiara that I made is, um, what I call my gold dragonfly one uh, because there's little dragonfly details on that tiara um, and I just sewed pink and like corally corally pink flower petals too and I didn't cover the whole entire tiara with flowers I really wanted to keep the element of the twiggy um, look the, the twiggy branches of the tiara itself because I think it's a really really pretty tiara and that's actually my preferred tiara for this costume so I have worn it with both um, but I think my preferred is definitely the gold tiara. The other thing that I wear um, with this costume are of course shoes um, so I just wear these ones here um, so these are what I call my Wonder Woman shoes because I wear them with a lot of my Wonder Woman outfits um, but they're just nude coloured heels um, I really do like having a block heel um, to make it easier to walk in and more comfortable. Um, and what you can do is if you if you feel like you are going to be in your shoes for a long time, um, you can wear socks and that will help with the pain. <laughs> Other accessories that I might wear with this costume include my earrings and my necklace, um, but these are just daily jewellery pieces that I always wear anyway. Um, with my hair, um, I do wear a wig or a half wig. Um, if you want to see that wig, just check out my Jasmine um, breakdown video because I take out the wig and show you what the wig looks like in that video. Um, but essentially I put on my half wig, pin it to my head, and then I just, um, I, I try to do different hairstyles each time I wear a princess outfit, but um, with a tiara on top, I tend to just do two side pieces pinned back and that's really all I do. The rest is just left loose. And that's it for the accessories. And I think that's also it for the costume. So uh, thank you so much for watching. If you got to the end of this video, um, please leave a comment um, if you've got any questions um, and check out my socials. So I'm on Instagram, obviously here on YouTube, and I've also got my website where you can find um, all sorts of uh, PDF downloads and my portfolio. Um, and you also can get access to Patreon from my website as well. Um, so thank you, and until next time, stay creative. Bye.